Welcome back. Well, since I'm on a multimeter kick, I decided it's time to take a look at the Fluke 77 here. I've had this meter for quite some time now. I've mentioned in other videos that this is my dad's meter. He'll actually be proud to know I'm doing a review of it today. Now, obviously, this is going to be different than the Fluke 77s on the market today because there is a newer model. Um, not sure off the top of my head which mark number it is but it's kind of like this is the original one and it was i'm sure mark two afterwards or maybe it was a mark one before that i don't really remember but this is the original fluke 77 and i think it's like mark five or mark seven i'll put it in the video here somewhere or in the description of which one it is currently but this one here is just a standard volt ohm and amperage meter um, and it does have the diode and continuity tester on it what I could say about it is, is um, growing up, my dad being an electrician, back in the 80s and the 90s, I, it maybe even earlier than that, because I was only born in 81. But anyway, <laughs> he he always went to these fluke meters once they were popular. Um, before that, he had different, you know, analog meters and uh, you know a couple specialty meters, but for a really good multi, and and he always told me go with a fluke meter. And this one is nice because it had the case that gave it the extra little like foot stand on the back here, and also has a belt clip. And you can also keep the leads clipped in the back. And I've just spooled the leads around here. And even back in the day, these were nice silicone coated. It feels like silicone. It may have been rubber, but it's a really flexible, nice lead. In fact, you could see they're pretty flexible too. And they, they move nice and one of the things I liked about this was is you could stick one of the leads in here hold the meter and kind of probe it one-handed like this if you needed so that was kind of cool and this is uh, an auto ranging meter where once you just set it it automatically figures out which voltage you're going for so if I go ahead and take this and plug it into my outlet over here to the side You can see it adjusts to 118.8 volts AC, which is handy because you know you don't always know exactly what voltage you're you're probing into, and it's nice to have it automatically range for you. I mean, it has a touch hold feature. It doesn't have backlighting that wasn't really prevalent back then. It does have that nice bar graph, like you could see, and um, you know it's it's nice. The you know, one of the things, like if you go over to Dave Jones' video uh, at the EV blog, you watch his videos. He does a lot of teardowns of different meters and cheap ones. And uh, yeah, he's a design engineer. I, I, I know very little <laughs> beyond a certain point. And he seems like he's very smart and knows a lot of things. And you know, I picked up a lot from him and seeing the insides of these meters here, this one and the older, <laughs> crappier ones I've done before. It's. Uh, it's it's good to know what you're looking at, I guess, because you can compare them and say what kind of looks like it's a good design and which ones are kind of sketchy. And even though this is an older model, it still has a lot of safety features in it. Now, again, now if you open up a brand new one, it's going to, you know, maybe be, depending on the model, either it's going to be, be built to a cost or it's going to have better features and it's going to be a lot more money. I, I don't know what this cost him back in the day, but I know it was, you know, a pretty penny. And I could see why compared to some of the other meters. Now, getting back to the point about the continuity tester. It's it's not exactly latch fast. If you go slower with it, obviously, but there are good ones where you can just keep going. You can see some of them it's picking up. But that's a lot better than the cheapy ones I showed you earlier. And, you know, it's really great. I mean, even it's it's fused. It's got the proper safety features, like I said. It actually has two different amperage inputs, whereas the only ones only had one. And uh, Well, I guess there's not much more to say about the outside of this. I'm going to have to tear it open now. You can see that the the dial doesn't go all the way around. It stops when it gets here. 
and you could turn it from the side. Again, another one-handed feature, which is kind of cool. It's a little stiff that way, but you can do it. Uh, and it does beep on every turn, which is kind of nice. It doesn't have that heavy click like the other ones does. It's a little more spongy, but then again, this one's been used a lot. To get it out, this just slips right out. And I actually like it like this. I mean, it's obviously protected the other way, but they have rubber feet in the bottom of it, so it stays and sticks to the desk really well. And the button is the, the dial, it's recessed, so this whole thing is flat. So it's flat both ways, and that was a design that I liked. And they are a little different now, but I, I do like that. And they give you all the fuse ratings on the back. I mean, in all fairness, the ch cheapy meter had that too. See them there in the naked. And I still have the parts off camera here to the iFixit one. You see this one has that raised up back end here and no fuse readings on the back, nothing. With these, they have that. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. Uh, I also like that this has four screws. If I got the right, yep. They're, they come out really quickly. They got this kind of coarse thread on it, which you could see if I get the camera to focus on. And I like, I like that. What would be better though, is if it had the metal threaded inserts on it. Oh yeah, and there's also, there's no uh, snaps on it. So this just comes, lifts straight out. And there you go. And you could see the build quality is much better, but that's to be expected because this isn't a cheapy meter. And I'm pretty sure this was made in America. I know there's ones today that they're not. They, they, I think they still have them where they are, but for the most part, they're not. And there's that large fast acting heavy duty fuse and then the smaller fuse it's it's got a glass outside but there's particles inside i don't i don't remember what kind of particles that is but i think it keeps the thing from bursting it kind of absorbs the uh action of the fuse and keeps it from exploding that's batteries from uh, good until 2008 and it is 2016 and it seems like it's working pretty well i mean i might as well change it while i'm in here i uh, now you see this switch is a lot different the action inside that case comes through this little shaft and the shaft actually turns this dial in here and this is like a points contact kind of switch which I like a lot better this little wiper moves and actually you can see there is a little bit of corrosion on it and where the wipers go it's 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 worn and I do have some deoxid so while I'm in here too I'm gonna deox all this and clean this up and make that good as new but yeah, there's some nice, nice big, like, looking like resistors over here. Very, very nice unit. If I can get the rest of the board out here, if I remember correctly, it, it does just slide out. I might have to break the video here for just a second so I can do this without boring you to death. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Be right with you. All right, got this apart. Managed to grab a little snack too because I was a bit hungry. But anyway, below the large fuse holder here was another screw. And that's what was actually holding it in the bottom. So now I can just flip this over and show you the other side. Now this does actually have the two chips on it here, which uh, are, is interesting because all the other ones you've seen had that little dot over it. So I guess that's another way to show build quality. Now maybe today the more modern ones has the epoxied over circuit on it. Not sure. You know, one day I'd like to pick up one of those and maybe we'll open that up then. But for now, I'll have to look at the older one. If I get closer here, you can see they actually routed out slots in the PCB here to keep, you know, some isolation in there, which is nice. And that's something that I noticed that wasn't on the other meters. Um, and also here, there's some there's some vias. Uh, not sure what the purpose of that is, but 
the engineering on this PCB is a lot better. Flip it back over. Get a nice up close shot of that. There's pretty much, I, I don't want to say no surface mount components because there are the two surface mount chips in the back here. But as far as the passive components, from what I can tell, they're, they are all through hole mounted. Again, this is back from the 80s. Um, in fact, somewhere up here, it says copyright 1987 John Fluke Manufacturing Company Incorporated. Um, I can't take this LCD off, even though there's four screws, because it is soldered in directly, as I can as I can tell. It would be kind of nice to modify this and put some backlighting behind that, but I don't think that's possible. But yeah, there's really not much more to point out in this. I'm going to go ahead and clean up these contacts a little bit. Oh yeah, I can show you the the beeper on this is actually mounted on the back case. It's, it's not um, exposed here or anything, but it, it's one of those piezo kind of transducers, and the contacts is actually just this spring over here, which is pretty neat. That actually popped off, so I have to get that mounted back on in the right spot. But yeah, that's pretty much all there is for this video. With that, I want to thank you for watching, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel. Um, I really appreciate it if you would. Subscribing helps grow this channel and gets me more viewers and more viewers eventually will you know, get me motivated to keep more, making more videos, basically. Thanks for watching. You know, as I was putting this thing back together, I noticed this little spring and I mentioned in the video that it belongs to this piezo buzzer over here and I said that the contact was over here and then I kind of corrected myself and said it must have fell off and I had to get moved. And I looked back at the footage, and it actually wasn't there at all. It came off of this little post over here. And the purpose of it is, is to ground out the metallic sticker here with the screw hole in the back. So when they sandwich together, you know, the shield is grounded out against some component here in the case. And that's where I was incorrect. Thanks for watching.